Hey guys, it's Sarah. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all doing amazing. Today's video is super exciting. It's my first time ever sharing some of my favorite crock pot recipes. So these recipes are amazing if you're in college, you're on a budget, you're busy and don't have a lot of time, you can just set it and forget it, but they all have flavor and they're all affordable to make. If you guys like this style of video and you want to see more from me, please be sure to let me know because it is the first time that I'm ever doing this video. Give me a thumbs up if you want to see more and leave me a comment on any way I can improve. If you want to see more recipes, if you want to see it slowed down or sped up, just let me know your feedback. It always helps me out. So recipe number one, I like to call this like a Mexican style shredded beef. I know that it's not authentic to a barbacoa, but it is a recipe that I followed. If I'm pronouncing it wrong, I'm super sorry. I'm not trying to offend anyone. I'm not trying to take from another culture without giving credit. That is the recipe that I followed. I know that it's not authentic, but it tastes amazing. It has a nice heat to it. You can use it inside of tacos, inside of burritos, on top of nachos. It's just amazing and it freezes really well. So it's something that you can make and freeze and then you'll have another meal. So here's what you're gonna need. On the screen, you can see all of the ingredients that I used for this recipe. And I will also put the list in the description box below, but you're gonna need some chilies in adobo. You're gonna need some green chilies, some cumin, some cloves, bay leaves, beef stock, oregano. Everything that I used will be linked down below. The meat that I use is a chuck roast, but you can use any meat that's low and slow cooked. You can typically find them at the grocery store, but I don't know if I would do the beef stew cubes. I don't know how that would turn out, but I think the chuck roast was absolutely perfect and you can find it on sale a lot of the time. Once the meat has been salted, we're gonna make the sauce and this is what's gonna give it the flavor. Be careful because this is spicy and everything that I added into the sauce will be down below, but I used the green chilies, about six cloves of garlic, a tablespoon of brown sugar, just to cut the heat one can of the chili in adobo um, and then you do like a one cup of the beef stock you pulse it in a ninja you just want it to be all mixed together put the sauce off to the side and we're going to sear our beef. I prefer to do this. It gives it a better flavor. I feel like it's a little bit juicier. You don't have to do it. It's totally up to you. But we're going to sear the beef on all sides and then put it into the crock pot. Now that all of our meat has been cooked and it's been put off to the side, we're gonna take one cup of the beef stock, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, and we're gonna add that into our sauce. This way we can get all of the spices and goodness out of that container and nothing is left behind. If you see a lot of spice being left behind, just use a little bit of extra beef stock and swish it around so that you get all that good flavor. Right on top, we're gonna do one packet of chicken bouillon. You can find this at Dollar Tree. You could do a bouillon cube, whatever you have. And then we're gonna add in some bay leaves right on top, just stick it in between the meat. Take one onion, you're gonna chop it into about thirds and place that onion on all sides right around the meat. Once you see that your beef is done and it's basically like falling apart, you can take it out, put it on a cutting board, shred it. It's so easy to do. If it's done right and it's completely done, it's gonna shred so easy and look delicious. If you don't want a lot of heat, you can eat it just like this and it won't be as spicy, but we're gonna put it back into our sauce and this is where the real flavor is gonna happen. Once the beef is shredded, you're gonna go back to your sauce and you're gonna add in the juice of two limes. Just juice it right in, put the beef back into the sauce. Let it cook on low for another 30 minutes and then it's gonna be ready to serve. You can serve it with tacos and burritos. It's amazing on top of nachos and it freezes so well so that you can just thaw it out and have another meal for another day. Recipe number two, we're gonna make stuffed shells in the slow cooker. This meal is amazing because you don't have to boil the noodles before and you could make this ahead of time where you fill all of the shells, freeze them, and then put them inside of the crock pot when you're ready to go. So I love any meals like that, especially around the colder months that you have prepared and ready in your freezer. You don't have to worry too much and this is one that you can do and just put it right in the crock pot. All of the ingredients will be listed down below or you can see them on the screen, but you're gonna need three jars of sauce, ricotta cheese, ground turkey, 
First thing we're going to do is brown our ground turkey. You want to cook it first before you put it into the shells. I just think it's better to do it this way. I'm just using a little bit of oil in a skillet and we're going to brown that up. Inside of my meat I did a tablespoon of minced garlic just to give it a little bit of flavor and you can do salt and pepper to season it. Once the meat has been cooked you're going to drain all of that extra grease and put it off to the side. For the shell filling, I'm going to put all of the ingredients in the description box below, but you basically just use ricotta cheese, parmesan cheese, mozzarella cheese. I use one or two eggs, all of the seasoning, so Italian seasoning, oregano, parsley, and then you just mix it all up. The egg helps it to bind, so it kind of becomes like a lasagna, but this is nice because it's going to help in what we're going to create later on. your filling is all mixed now you can put it inside of a ziploc bag and just snip one end so that you can kind of try to pipe it into the shells you can also do it with a spoon whatever you have either way works grab your crock pot you're going to do a whole entire jar of sauce at the bottom this is what's going to help the shells cook so make sure you use a good amount of sauce one jar of sauce and now we're going to pipe our cheese into our shells Fun fact, I used to work at a ravioli factory when I was super duper young and it was like the worst job that I ever had. So we would like use this big machine to fill raviolis, frozen raviolis, and I hated that job. <laughs> anyway, so now we're doing the ones with the ground turkey. I just scooped the turkey in and then piped the cheese. This way worked nice. It was super duper easy. We're going to line the entire bottom with one row of stuffed shells. So I did part of it with the ground turkey and part of it without. Once you have the amount of shells that fit in your crock pot, you're going to do another layer of sauce, a layer of mozzarella cheese, and then you're going to stack more shells on top of that. This is what makes it like a lasagna to me because it all comes out together and the egg kind of binds it together, but it's totally up to you if you want to do one layer or two. I did two and then I topped it with mozzarella cheese. You're gonna put the lid on the crock pot and you can cook it for about two to two and a half hours depending on your crock pot, depending on how long you're cooking it on low or slow. I served mine with bread and I thought that it was absolutely delicious. Recipe number three, the last and final one, is a dessert for an apple crisp that is out of this world. But we're going to use a mascarpone whipped cream topping that you have got to try because it's going to take it to the next level. For the apple crisp, if you want to make it for yourself, I'll have all the ingredients all listed down below as well as on the screen. You want to start by taking eight apples. You want to wash and peel them, and then I use the Dollar Tree apple slicer to slice them. Put them all into a bowl, squeeze a little bit of lemon juice on top so that they don't brown, and then you want to add in brown sugar, white sugar, nutmeg, cinnamon, a little bit of allspice, a little pinch of salt, and then you want to add in vanilla extract. Mix that all up, mix it well. I definitely wish I added in more apples, but it's totally up to you. My apples were kind of small. Now for the apple crumble, you're gonna use rolled oats, flour, brown sugar, cinnamon, and butter. You wanna take all the ingredients and you wanna basically fork the butter into this mixture so that it becomes the crumble. I forgot to add in the cinnamon, so don't do that. And you can add in a pinch of salt as well. But you basically just wanna mix it all together. I find using my hands works better, but mix it until it all becomes that nice crumble. Now go ahead and grab your crock pot. You want to use a little bit of butter just to grease it. Then on top of that, I did flour. I shook it all around just so that the apples wouldn't stick and I added in my apples. Then right on top, I added the apple crumble and I just patted it down. Now this part is crucial. You want to take paper towels or a kitchen towel and lay it over top of the crock pot. This way when you put the lid down, the water that collects in the lid won't go into the apple crisp and it will be nice and crispy and it won't be mushy. I would highly recommend doing this. I saw it online. It made my apple crisp turn out super duper nice. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to lock my lid and I'm going to let it cook for about two to two and a half hours. It cooks super duper fast and I cooked mine on high, but again, slow and low is always better. Now I wanna share how to make a mascarpone whipped cream topping. That is a must. You're gonna take mascarpone cheese, you're gonna take heavy whipping cream, confection sugar, and a little bit of vanilla extract.
Y'all, I made the biggest mess. If somebody wants to donate to my Get Sarah a Stand Mixer fund, I will have my PayPal and my Amazon wish list down below because Homegirl needs it because I made a big old mess, but it ended up turning out. It worked out nicely, and this whipped cream is game changing, life changing. I just kept on going back and dipping strawberries in it and blueberries. It's amazing, but it tastes so good on our finished apple crisp. This is how it looks in the crock pot. And this is how it looks when it's all done. 10 out of 10. This is amazing. If you guys are not bakers, like I'm not a baker, you can still bake this. It's that easy. It's super inexpensive and it has so much flavor. It tastes amazing. So those are all three of the crock pot recipes for this video. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Share some of your favorite crock pot recipes with me in the comment section too. And I might try them out and feature them in the next video. If you guys want to share your favorites, I would definitely appreciate it. If you're still here, then you are a real one. And I appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. Anybody that stays to the end, I definitely appreciate. Leave the word honey in the comment section down below. Leave it in a funny, snarky, cute kind of way, but it's our secret word that only the people that stay to the end know what it is, and that's how I can tell who the real ones are. Here are a few from my previous video. I love you guys so much. Thank you in advance for leaving a comment and a thumbs up. It helps me out so very much, more than you'll ever know. It helps to push my videos out there, and we could use that right about now. So thank you, I love you, and I will see you guys next time for another video. Bye, you guys.